Thank you very much. Can I uh, invite Assembly Member Barry to formally move, uh, sorry, second uh, your amendment, please. Thank you. You have five minutes. Thank you very much, Chair. I hope my internet's working at the moment. It sounds a bit dodgy on your end. Um, but thank you very much, uh, Caroline, uh, for introducing our proposed budget amendment, and I'm very pleased to second it. This year, we've faced extraordinary amounts of loss in London. 12,000 lost friends, family members, colleagues, we should still have and we will remember. And too many Londoners are facing an uncertain future, worried about losing their businesses, incomes and devastatingly their homes. So quite rightly, a priority in the new ideas we looked for when developing our amendment to the budget was finding practical and more immediate ways to ease the housing crisis. I'm still a private renter and I know the risks we face cause so much worry. Individual renters struggle to stand up to bad landlords to get fair tenancy terms and to have their rights enforced. That's why today for a second year, we're again proposing financial support for London's independent renters groups who defend our rights collectively. This is in the form of 1.5 million in grants to help them develop and grow. The mayor has adopted many of our good green ideas in the past five years, and he hasn't picked this one up yet. But the need for renter protections hasn't gone away. It's got more urgent. And the ripple effects of the pandemic are having an awful impact on some groups of people who are already on the brink. Over the last year, we've seen the number of homeless young people hit historic highs, and this must be addressed by us here at City Hall. With my colleagues on the Housing Committee, I've heard from local authorities that we need a pan-London approach to supporting specific vulnerable groups like this, supported by City Hall. And in fact, everyone here agrees too. In December, the Assembly unanimously supported a motion I put asking for specialist support for homeless young people and for the Mayor to create a dedicated budget to provide not just bed spaces, but the wider support needed by young people facing the streets for the first time. Our amendment puts money where the Assembly's mouth is. We found some initial funding for a dedicated budget by boosting the GLA non-policing council tax precept by a tiny extra 0.3%. This is rounding up, increasing the Mayor's proposals by just 41 pence for the whole year. But this small rise would bring in around £1.2 million pounds and we propose using it to provide as many dedicated bed spaces for under 25s as possible, along with wider support for them. And finally, this amendment breaks some new ground. We need fresh thinking on housing in City Hall. And one gap we have is that we focus on building starts and we don't think enough about the homes that already exist on the ground and how we can use them more immediately to help. Today, we're proposing something very simple, a first step. We all clapped for key workers. Our amendment today would do something real to pay tribute to their work and their needs. We provide them with nearly 2,000 new homes at rents people on average incomes can genuinely afford. Our proposal starts in stage one with using £400 million, taken partly from the £500 million the Assembly discovered was lying unused from the housing funding awarded to London in 2016, and partly from the new settlement from 2021, where 10% is available to be used for acquisitions. With this, we would acquire 907 homes, primarily in new and completed developments that are currently intended for market sale, and we've worked with councils and housing associations to rent these at a London living rent. Stage two of our plan and stage three both extend into the next budget year, from the balance of net income from the first of these homes, we have a stable revenue stream that we can then use to borrow against once established. And we've used this new borrowing for a further 506 key worker homes in the second half of this budget year, and then another 506 next year too. This clearly won't solve the whole housing crisis, but it does make a start on a good idea that isn't being pursued yet. I want to continue a conversation with you and the mayor about how a plan like this could be could work and be adapted. I hope you'll see that this amendment balances and not only that it creates a likely surplus which opens up other possibilities too. Today we've deliberately kept it simple but the concept could be expanded, amended, worked up and do a lot more than this. In conclusion, every idea I've presented here is a practical solution to different aspects of the housing crisis. Some are ideas we've put forward before some are new, and new ideas are what you've come to expect from the Greens. As always, this document has run the rigorous gauntlet of the finance team, and it does balance out. It's legal, it's workable, and it's practical, and you could vote it through today. 
I hope what you've heard has inspired you to vote for our proposals and I recommend our amendment to the Assembly.